Welcome to Scarlet. Scarlet, which stands for Scalable and Reconfigurable Electronics Platforms and Tools, is an EC-funded FP7 first call project coordinated by Thales Avionics. This presentation will provide you with the basic knowledge regarding integrated modular avionics. Let's start with a recall about the origin of the Integrated Modular Avionics, or IMA concept. IMA concept appeared in the 90s. At this time the main objectives were to reduce the number of equipment by increasing the level of integration, to reduce the number of type of equipment, and to reduce the cost of platform development and maintenance. In the 90s, first experiences with IMA architecture led to many issues related to dependencies introduced through resource sharing between applications hosted on the same platform. This issue became extremely significant, especially in terms of costs, when several applications delivered by several independent actors were shared on common resource. A solution to those issues was initiated by Airbus and Thales on A380 program by introducing a high-level IMA integration capability. The incremental certification process was born. Around year 2000, shown on the red bar, IMA was not only a technique to smartly share common resource and reduce the overall platform integration costs, it also became a new business model by supporting a multi-actors integration process. The tendency is to go for a more distributed, therefore more modular platform, either by offering modules dedicated to each type of resource, typically processing I.O., or by extended to other types of resources, graphic. Anyway, whatever the level of modularity of the platform component, this new business model will remain valid. Moreover, due to the increase in the integration scope, more functions on board of the IMA, the need to preserve independency between actors will remain, whereas the need for a more efficient tooled incremental integration-based process will significantly increase. To better understand IMA resource sharing issue, we will come back to the reference process for systems or aircraft functions integration, the federated process. The federated process can be considered as an ideal reference for the system point of view. Each system or aircraft function is independent, having its own set of equipments being dedicated. Platform integration phase is in fact a set of individual integration of the function of its dedicated hardware. Consequently, the integration steps are dedicated to functional aspects including communications between functions. One should note that the hardware of one system has no impact on the integration phase of another system. When the hardware-software integration of each application is passed, subsequent integration phases are purely functional. In a conventional IMA approach, the architecture is built with several applications integrated on common modules. The same hardware resources are therefore shared between multiple functions. Please note that in conventional integration process there are no particular features except a basic partitioning to reduce influence or side effects that one application may cause to another due to their co-location on the same hardware resource. Compared to the federated architecture process, several issues may be encountered after the unitary integration of each function on the platform. Some non-functional dependencies may exist between functions due to resource sharing. An application may disturb another application simply by using a common resource. It's not possible to rely, for certification purpose, on sufficient independency between application because of the robustness insufficiency of the basic partitioning. 
to get round of these resource sharing issues, it's necessary to lead an additional integration activity to assess the unitary integration results remains valid when all applications are present on the platform. This is the principle described in the DO297 document, which should be considered for certification of IMA architectures. This additional integration activity has the following drawbacks. This task may be costly, requesting multi-systems integration means. This task is late in the process, leading to costly evolutions in case of issue. This task is recurrent, potentially to be repaid in case of any evolution of any application. This task comes back to physical concerns, resource sharing, at a time where only functional activities should be at stake. The incremental certification process is an answer to the drawback of the previously presented conventional integration process. The principle is to embed within the platform a sufficient robust partitioning called extended partitioning that allows for a full independent hardware-software integration of each application. It also allows the function supplier to take credit for its integration activities to build its certification package in advance. Please note, extended partitioning rules are supported by various mechanisms within the platform i.e. both hardware and software. The use of incremental certification process also allows for a complete task separation of the following actors. The platform supplier. In charge of platform development, he enforces extended partitioning properties of the platform. The function supplier. Those who develop functions applications on top of platform resources and the platform module integrator, in charge of managing each resource. Consequently, the incremental certification process builds a business model. For each application, the exhaustive identification of the subset of extended partitioning platform properties that applies to this application is necessary. This set of applications or user constraints is called usage domain. Platform Module Integrator manages the resources and in particular allocates segments of resources to each application. This allocation, validated against the usage domain, constitutes the application budget or integration contract ensuring application independence. Additional application can be installed on platform provided existing budgets are preserved, controlled through usage domain rules. The incremental principle can be resumed as follows. Incremental process allows a function supplier to work as if it was alone on platform as soon as the development of the function fits with the usage domain. So from the point where all budgets are defined and validated, no actor of the incremental process can encounter issues related to resource sharing. We recover the functional integration phases as in the federated process. Extended partitioning with usage domain set of rules leads a qualified absolute partitioning between hosted applications and is the key for incremental process. As stated before, the incremental process not only proposes ways to ease the integration phase thanks to extended partitioning mechanism, but also proposes a business model by defining actors and their associated responsibilities. To sum up, essential activities relative to the incremental certification process are Platform supplier Ensure extended partitioning and usage domain definition and qualification, exhaustiveness of criterion. ATA42 IMA System and Platform Modular Integrator. Focus on global configuration, resource allocation and budgets definition. Lead the IMA incremental process. System designers and application suppliers provide applications and focus on their functional concern. 
Let's have a look at the relationship between the previously identified actors. Function suppliers provides applications and defines resource usage through local configuration. Platform module supplier provides modules and qualified usage domain ensuring extended partitioning. Regarding platform module integrator activities, two levels are to be distinguished in the ATA 42 activities. Platform module integrator. This role focuses on resource allocation, budgets definition through global configuration and process achievement. ATA 42 IMA system. This role is at a higher level as its purpose is to organize all the activities and manage the relations between all the actors, therefore defining and validating the set of functions supported by IMA, defining and initiating the IMA incremental process, and managing the relations between platform supplier, platform integrator and application suppliers, especially in terms of contracts. When it comes to compare IMA alternatives using the federated process as a reference, at first order, both approaches, conventional and incremental, lead to benefits relative to platform level costs induced by modularity and genericity. Conventional approach leads to an n-square model, n representing the number of hosted systems because of a non-functional interdependencies between systems systems levels because system dependencies may exist and lead to impact on a given system from another system independently from functional concern. At aircraft level because Airframer has to manage these issues potentially outside the initial contractual scope. Incremental approach leads to an N plus one model cost model. It needs a strong investment on platform and IMA process to build the incremental certification capability. ATA42 equivalent to an additional system. No other additional costs because system recover their independently like in the federated process. And additional benefits come from a better standardization and more accurate interface between platform and applications usage domain. Thank you for listening. Special reference should be given to other Scarlet partners involved in the work presented as Airbus. Please visit our website and should you have any further questions regarding this video presentation, please do not hesitate to contact any of the persons mentioned. Thank you for your attention.